I would now like to pass you over to Molly, who I say it was my pleasure to meet through Hexatime, to discuss her concept of the unequal swimming lane analogy, which just might help offer us a place to start having those conversations. Thanks very much, Molly. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Hilda. I'd like to thank God and I'd like to thank uh, um, COPE Scotland and Q, uh, the Q community for giving me the opportunity to speak about something that really came out of a very sad and dark place in the world at the time. If I can just remind us all, uh, for those of us who work in healthcare, but globally, there was a man called George Floyd and he was unfortunately murdered in the United States and uh, the, the, the perpetrator had been um, jailed. So the equal swimming lane was then comparable to what happens in the NHS and to the police force here. And from that, I was asked to give a presentation about my thoughts on this. And I put the unequal swimming lane as an analogy that demonstrates um, an organization. So an organization, when you go to a swimming pool, you're meant to be working and uh, you're meant to be swimming according to the rules and the processes in that swimming pool. But if you're going into a swimming pool that has three different uh, liquid, one is water, one has crude oil, water, crude oil, water, and the other one is crude oil, and you're all meant to be swimming in this lane, clearly some people are going to get to the end of the swimming pool faster than the other. Now, normally we would say the people in the, in society, the people in the crude oil, the mixed lane are considered unfortunate. They are unfortunate people. But actually those people also have something they bring to the table. And it's about recognizing those things that they bring to the table whilst we're trying to get them from being in that mixed lane or in that crude oil lane to become in the water lane, they have resilience, they have toughness, they've, they've, they've learned to overcome challenges and barriers. And they've through those challenges and barriers, they have become toughened and are able to with, with help, withhold some of the, the challenges that they counterpart in this in the water lane would not be able to 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 achieve and the question for us as healthcare professionals as human beings as people who look after other patients what do we know do we see people who are in all these different lanes are, are they applicable to us as people do we is it evident are we are we are we aware of it or do we think, no, it doesn't exist? If we think it does exist, how can we help those people in those mixed lanes and the crude oil lane to become part of the people who are just swimming nicely, happy? Because we know that when workforce, healthcare workforce particularly, when they're happy, then it means that they can give themselves, they can give the best of themselves to their patient to the organization and therefore to the wider world. So the question is, how do we, how do we make sure that this unequal swimming lanes does not continue to exist to the point where somebody else, somebody's life is taken unlawfully? And how do we also ensure that we as human beings are able to be in that position, to be in that water lane, and so that we can give the best of ourselves to everybody else. So um, I, I guess that's really the concept and how can you use that concept within your own organization to understand what's actually happening and see how you can then okay, we recognize that you're in this food oil lane or you're in this mixed lane. What can we do to ensure that you are in the water lane? And that's really how I would like people to use the concept. 
And that's how I would like people to make it more accessible to a wider world. So again, I would like to thank Hilda, Cobbs Coastland and Q community for the opportunity to actually share this today. And I'm very happy to answer any questions or any, any thoughts that this might have generated from your perspective. Thank you. That's brilliant, Molly. Thank you so much. Before we go into some discussion groups, does anyone have any questions just now that they would like to ask Molly? Now, I can't see any hands up. Um, Matthew, if you can see if anyone's put their hand up. Right. How about maybe I haven't explained myself very well. <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's perfect. I think it's it's a really good way to think about inequality. Um, because there are people who are swimming in the crude lane who have built up a resilience. Uh, when when Molly and I were were talking about this, I recalled someone once coming to our service for support and they were inconsolable. The, the grief that they were expressing was so, 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 so much pain. And it was someone in their 40s, late 40s, and they had lost someone close to them. And I remember asking, have you ever experienced bereavement before? Thinking at that age, maybe they had lost even a grandparent, a pet. No, they had never lost anyone ever. Have you ever experienced loss through job, through concern? No, no. Up to this point, they had not experienced any pain at all. And I remember thinking, no wonder you are so distressed because you don't have anything to draw on to help you see that actually you're going to be able to get through this. Because it's not nice to experience adversity. But when we experience adversity, we come through the other side. Next time we experience adversity, we have something to draw on that can try and help sustain us. And I'm glad to 